The tornado is touted as the fastest production catamaran in the world and always attracts a good spectator fleet, and it's easy to see why. When powered up, these cats make for some fast and spectacular racing. The tornado demands plenty of strength from crewmen and firm nerve when negotiating the course at high speed. Things happen very quickly for a tornado crew. The double hull and the trapeze is simply no place for the uncommitted or hesitant sailor. The Tornado World Championships attracted an unprecedented fleet of Olympic multi-hull sailors. 19 countries were represented with 51 crews. This would be an important Olympic build-up for the qualified sailors and the final chance for qualification for the remaining four berths of the 16 allowable to go to the Games in August. Nine nations were yet to qualify, including New Zealand, whose hopes fall squarely on the shoulders of Aaron McIntosh and Mark Kennedy. McIntosh's rise to fame came in the late 1990s with back-to-back -back windsurfing world titles and an Olympic bronze, sailing the Mistral board for New Zealand in Sydney 2000. He then switched to Tornado in 2003 and will look to qualify for what will be the last time Tornadoes will be seen at the Olympic Games. Olympic gold medalist Bruce Kendall made his debut in the Tornado in 2006. He will helm with Blair Tuke as crew. The rock stars of the sport and current ISAF ranked number one are the Australian team of Darren Bundock and Glenn Ashby. This pair come into the World Championships on form with a string of recent wins at Sail Melbourne, the Australian Nationals and Sail Auckland a week prior to this regatta. Bundock and Ashby have set the standard for the 2008 Olympics, proving their mettle in all weather conditions. Coach Mike Fletcher has his team focused on a top podium finish here at the Worlds, keeping his country firmly on course for gold in China. Current world champions Fernando Eschavi and Anton Paz of Spain will defend the title they won in Portugal in 2007. Like many of the Olympic qualified crews, the Spaniards will look to peak their form in August and use this regatta as a major event in their Olympic build-up program. First A competition and the shifty easterlies provide a challenge for the best of the Tornado crews. Wider matter conditions can be a great leveller, as most crew work hard to find even pressure. By mid-regatta, the winners of the shifty win battle were the French pair of Jan Guichard and Alexandra Gabler, who took line honours over the Australians Bundock and Ashby on the start of day two. Table positions were like snakes and ladders, with the German team of Roland Gabler and Gunnar Stuckman on top spot until the Frenchman rocketed through in day two. Top Canadian duo Oscar Johansson and Kevin Stittle were also impressive and by race 7 and 8 were really hitting some great form and had begun challenging the top of the table contenders. On the final day, the Australians timed their start to perfection, setting a blistering pace for the fleet to follow. The Canadians showed excellent speed, rounding the second mark, and the Australians led by just one length. The conditions in this second to last day of sailing had freshened with a gusty 15 to 20 knot northeasterly. Choppy seas and clear skies, and the tornadoes took flight. Germany's Roland Gabler and Gunnar Struckman, and the American pairing of John Lovell and Charlie Ogletree followed in third and fourth positions down the second leg. Down the run and the Canadians had slipped back and by the top mark for the second time the Australians had opened a big lead of six lengths over Gabler, Gouchard had climbed into third place. Bundock and Ashby extended to a 43 second win ahead of Gabler and Struckman, then Lovell and Ogletree. The Dutch crew of Mitch Booth and Pim Neuwenhuis take fourth place in the seventh race and would secure an overall position of sixth, a consistent performance for the Dutch Olympic crew. With the last day of racing cancelled due to the arrival of a cyclone, Bundock and Ashby had consolidated their lead on 34 points and were announced world champions for 2008. Yeah, I guess um, we came here knowing that New Zealand's going to offer really good conditions here. It's a popular sailing nation, very similar to Australia. Um, so we knew we were going to get good breeze. Um, we didn't really realise it was going to be as good as today. Um, 
but yeah, we came in here confident to take a win. Um, I've won five before, so we know how to do it. Glennie's won many world championships, both on Tornado and on A-Class, so we, we did come here to win, that's for sure. The surprise performers, Canadians Johansson and Stittle, were five points behind, with five top four finishes under their belts. Olympic qualification for Canada is sweet reward for a well-organised and timed campaign. The Canadians put their success down to logistical planning, stationing a boat in Australia and their A-boat in New Zealand. Sail Auckland a week prior to the event gave them good insight on how to handle the Waitamata conditions. We've had a little bit of extra pressure for the Solar Regatta trying to do that standard, and I think it's uh, got us a little bit distracted from actually